Hello and welcome to my review of the new Adeptus Mechanicus units. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at the uh, rules of them in very close detail. And that's because uh, the new kits don't include the full rules uh, for the units uh, that are in the kit that you pay for. At present, this is the only way of uh, getting those rules, of having a look at the rules by purchasing this book. You'll find the rules in this Psychic Awakening book. It uh, will set you back £25. I've had a good look into it. It's pretty good if you've got uh, Knight Armies, uh, Slanesh, specifically Slanesh and Adeptus Mechanicus. If you've got both of those, then um, you know, you're going to get the most out of it. There's a little bit about Corn and Nurgle and Zinch, but it's mainly Slanesh and Adeptus Mechanicus. There are 104 pages in the book, which is more than my other two books, more than The Faith and Fury, uh, which is basically just a huge collection of uh, stratagems and uh, name builders, relics and things for all the other Chaos Armies. And it's a lot more than uh, Phoenix Rising Psychic Awakening book. Uh, this one only had about 70 odd pages. So it's a decent size at 104. Uh, I still think it would have been nice if it was 120 or so, or each of them were, or a couple of them were bundled in as, as one. Um, because having sort of seven or eight uh, Psychic Awakening books at £25 each, will set you back a couple of hundred pound if you, if you wanted to get all of them. Anyway, the accompanying book that you will uh, preferably need um, to go with Engine War is uh, the current Codex Adeptus Mechanicus. And this includes uh, all of the other uh, units. So these two books um, will allow you to build an Adeptus Mechanicus army of your, of your choosing. You know, both of these combined have, have all the units in. Now, I am not aware of Games Workshop's uh, release schedule, I guess, that they, they'll be releasing Adeptus Mechanicus uh, Ninth Edition uh, Codex within the next year or so. But as they've said at the very start of the announcement of Ninth Edition, your Eighth Edition Codexes will still work. And if we were on the cusp of a new release, and uh, I knew for certain that that wouldn't be the case, or Games Workshop would uh, announce that, then I wouldn't have shown you that Codex. I would have uh, suggested you wait. You wait for the new edition Codex. Um, but you can still use them. So let's have a detailed look at these new units then. So it gives you a little, little picture there of them. And then it gives you uh, Keepers of Divine Law. You've got Holy Order Warlord Traits. You've got Stratagems, Name Generator, Canticle. So a bit of a contents there. Then it uh, talks about the units themselves, gives them a bit of uh, a law. I would have liked to see more, more than three pages, but you know, there we go. And even like a timeline or something like that. Uh, because it's been a while since the Adeptus Mechanicus Codex. Anyway, uh, it gives you a little bit of a background story to Tech Priest uh, Manipulases, uh, or Manipuli, however you want to call it. Uh, Cerberus Cavalry, uh, which includes um, uh, both the Raiders and uh, Sulphur Hounds in just those, those three paragraphs. Then uh, it uh, gives you some background on the armored vehicles, the Scorpiuses, or Scorpio, anyway, uh, the Disintegrators and the Dune Riders. The Disintegrators, like main battle tanks, and the Dune Riders, the, the transport option. Then on the airborne assets, which include the Taraxi and the Archaeopters. And that's it. You get the three pages just detailing some background of these uh, new units. And when I say new units, obviously the Scorpius. Um, Dune Rider and Disintegrator, that model came out July last year and the rules were included in the kit and they still are. Both variants are included in the kit, but now we've got them in, in sort of colour in, in this form. Okay, so the first thing we'll look at is the Tech Priest Manipulus and I will have a, a good zoom in here for, for the rules. So the Tech Priest Manipulus, uh, it's an HQ choice, um, it's a power points cost of a four and uh, stat line reads, movement of six inches, weapon skill and ballistic skill both three plus, strength four, toughness four, four wounds, three attacks, leadership eight, and a save of two plus. It's a single model equipped with a magna rail lance, mechadendrites, and omniscient staff. I can already feel the taste of your questions infiltrating my new sphere, and one of the most prominent ones is super. How does it compare to a normal tech priest dominus? Uh, should I get the manipulus or should I get the dominus? Well, it depends if you game or you don't game, and it depends which one you like the look of. I always go for the rule of cool and try and make models that look look awesome uh, rather than, you know, I say cheesy, but, you know, competitive. But the Tech Priest is uh, is more expensive. 
So power points cost of a seven. He has a better ballistic skill. He's got one extra wound at five and his weapons are longer range. Um, you know, this Magna Rail Lance is the longest range uh, the Manipulus has got, and it's only 18 inches. So this thing has only got a, an effective range of 24 inches. So it may well be uh, worth bundling him into a, a Stratoraptor or a, a Scorpius or something like that, um, just to protect him. Now, another thing that the Manipulus is missing is like a secondary uh, ranged weapon. Now, you can equip him with the Magna Rail Lance or the Transonic Cannon, but he doesn't have like a little pistol or anything like that, like the Tech Priest Dominus does. The Dominus has, starts off with a uh, Volkite Blaster and a Macro Stubber, but you can exchange either of them for an Eradication Ray and a Phosphor Serpenta. So you're missing out on a secondary ranged weapon there uh, that the uh, Dominus has. The ranged weapons themselves, the Manipulus has the, the better strength weapon. It's a heavy one, strength seven, AP minus three and damage D3, whereas the higher strength weapon is a six uh, for the Tech Priest Dominus. But um, both, the, both the Eradication Ray and the Volkite Blaster uh, have the ability to pump out more shots. The Ray has a heavy D3 and the Volkite Blaster has a straight up heavy three. They both have some buffing abilities, such as if you target enemies uh, at eight inches or less, then you've got an AP of minus four and a damage of D3. So that Eradication uh, Ray does stack and so does the Volkite Blaster on sixes you get a mortal wound. Whereas the Magna Rail Lance also has a buffing ability uh, where if it remains stationary, then you get a damage characteristic of, of three. So that's quite decent. You, you know, although it's short range, you want it to be standing still to get that damage three um, straight away. The Transonic Cannon is very similar to a, a, a Flamer uh, in that uh, it automatically scores a hit, but it's great that it's got a damage of two though. It's got Mechadendrites, which I always found a bit weird that the Tech Priest Dominus didn't have, uh, and that just gives an extra possible six attacks. The Omniscient Staff, it adds plus two to the strength, allowing it to have strength six, which is better than the Omniscient Axe, which is uh, only plus one strength, but the, the Axe has a, a minus two AP and a damage of two, whereas the Omniscient Axe only has minus one uh, AP, but still has the same damage. The whole ability section then for it, they, they both have Canticles of the Omnissiah, um, they both have Master of Machines. The Manipulus has blessed has a new one called Blessed Bionics, uh, where it has a 5 plus invulnerable save, and at the start of the movement phase, model regains up to D3 lost wounds. Now, the Dominus has a Refractor Field, which is the 5 plus invulnerable, and also has uh, Masterwork Bionics, which, again, uh, can regain D3 lost wounds. So they've combined both of those um, abilities into one, into Blessed Bionics. And then the other uh, ability that the Dominus has is called Lord of the Machine Cult. You can reroll hit rolls of one in the shooting phase for friendly uh, Fortress Royale units within six inches. So the Dominus is very much a, a shooty HQ, which is reflected in that better ballistic skill, um, and also can buff your shooty units as well. Uh, the Manipulus has this other ability called Galvanic Field um, and uh, can activate this at the start of the movement uh, phase. You can either bolster Warriors, where you add uh, one inch to the move characteristic, whilst they're within six inches, or whoop de doo um, and you can add one to the advance roll charges, that's probably a little bit better, um, within six inches, or bolster Weapons. It means that the model cannot move for any reason, but you add six inch to maximum range characteristic of ranged weapons with an unmodified range characteristic of 24 inches or more that are equipped by models in, in the units. Um, and you add two inch to the maximum range characteristic of all other ranged weapons in the units equipped while they, whilst they are within um, six inches of any friendly models. So uh, it's really gonna affect um, the weapons that have 24 inch range uh, they, they're going to be shooting now at 30 inch and everything else gets an extra two inch. Um, I'm not sure whether that includes himself. His Forge World unit specifically says what's over within range of uh, six inches of him. And that's it for the Tech Priest Manipulus. Let's jump on over to the Cerberus uh, Sulphur Hounds right here. Now these are the new kids on the block. Uh, you've got the uh, Sulphur Hounds and the Raiders. Um, before, there were only two uh, fast attack choices um, for Adeptus Mechanicus, the Sidonian Dragoons and the Iron Strider Ballistari. So fast attack uh, is, has been a big focus on this release and it's a very welcome one. I, I did mention before that um, 
Adeptus Mechanicus were kind of lacking in uh, in their fast attack uh, choices. And I'm pleased that Games Workshops now address this uh, with the, the Sulphur Hounds and the uh, Raiders. Now the Sulphur Hounds are a little bit more expensive. Uh, they're power points cost of a three and the Raiders are power points cost of a two. Their stat line for both are, is exactly the same. Uh, there are a decent movement speed of 12 inches, uh, weapon skill 4 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength, toughness and wounds are all three. They've got one attack, leadership 6 and a save of 4 plus. So they are lacking in attacks, they are a bit squishy, they've got a nice number of wounds. Uh, the ballistic skill is 3 plus though uh, and the leadership is, is quite poor and the, the save isn't, isn't the best. However, I do like the fact that they've got three wounds instead of sort of two. Um, I just wish they would have a toughness of four. It really baffles me how Primaris, um, the new Primaris bikers are toughness five, I think. And I get that they're, they're Primaris. The bike increases that toughness. Whereas these guys' toughness is, is worse than Tech Priest Manipulus. Because typically units on mounts uh, have something to reflect that. In this, they're only reflected by that, by having the, uh, the, the extra wounds. And I would have liked to have seen a, a big mechanical um, beast like, like these have a toughness four to reflect that, um, as Space Marines usually do on bikes. The unit contains one Sulphur Hound Alpha and two C Cerberus Sulphur Hounds. It can additionally contain up to three Sulphur Hounds or up to six. Uh, so you can have seven in your uh, unit. You know, you can have seven uh, Sulphur Hounds and one uh, Alpha. It's a bit odd that you can't have ten. It would be awesome to, to see ten or so on, on the, the battlefield, but uh, it, it is what it is. I think a unit of six in total it is very decent, if not a bit pricey. But at the end of the day, uh, that is going to be 18 wounds in those uh, six models. Quite decent. The Alpha is equipped with a Phosphor Blast Pistol and uh, uh, the Sulphur Breath and Clawed Limbs and a Power Maul. And then uh, all the other Sulphur Hounds are equipped with two Phosphor Pistols, Sulphur breath and clawed limbs so they're, they're really going with these um sort of dual pistol akimbo um uh, type uh i want to call them vanguard they all intents and purposes they look like vanguard compared to the the raiders which look uh, a lot more just like skitari um compared to the raiders which look a lot more like skitari rangers so the weapons that they're all equipped with these phosphor uh, pistols uh, the 12 inch pistol one strength four ap minus one and a damage of one uh, and then when re and then when resolving the attack uh, targets not receive benefit of cover um yeah it it's a pistol one weapon and you're gonna get two shots if you've got two of them nothing amazingly special about them other than they've got ap minus one i guess uh, the sulfur breath however uh, is a bit bit more like a flamer. It's, it's an 8-inch pistol D6. It's the same strength, uh, AP and damage as the, the pistol. Um, and again, and it automatically hits and the uh, unit, again, doesn't receive the benefit of cover. So if you're going against horde armies, uh, or if you're going against armies that have a low um, armor rating, and they're dependent on cover saves, uh, then this is where uh, these models are, are going to... Um, come into their own uh, you know the the range of the weapons is 12 inches and the movement of 12 so that's effective range of 24 inches there again that they, they don't have a very high strength and um, they don't have a very high uh, toughness they have a fair amount of wounds but they only have one attack and the save is a 50 50 chance of them dying so um, i wouldn't really put them too close to enemies uh, it's great that you should really be whizzing them around and picking off units with those pistols, trying to avoid close combat where possible. But if they do find themselves in close combat with another fast attack unit, for instance, like another uh, assault pack um, uh, squad with uh, melee weapons or something like that, at least you've got the alpha um, that has the two attacks and it has um, the, the phosphor blast pistol, uh, which is a better strength at strength five. Uh, and that's the only difference between uh, his blast pistol and the, the normal pistol. Um, the clawed limbs, which I guess the uh, sulfur hounds have, um, uh, pluses the strength by one, so at least that's strength four. Uh, AP zero though and damage one, um, but when the bear attacks it makes two additional attacks with this weapon. So you're getting two, two attacks uh, with those clawed limbs, which is better than the, the standard stat line. Now the alpha does come with the power maul, uh, which pluses the strength by two, so that's strength five. AP is minus one and a damage of one. So you're going to be getting uh, two attacks there with the power maul at strength five, uh, and then you've got the, the two attacks with the clawed limbs. 
options for every three models in this unit one sulfur hound can be equipped with one phosphor blast carbine instead of one phosphor pistol and i would strongly recommend you do that because that is uh bumps up the effective range of this unit and i'd always try and take it with each uh, group of three of them over the standard pistols because it's an assault four weapon so you're doubling up your shots there, uh, you're doubling up your range of 24 inches, um, you're increasing your strength to five now, and again, it still has the same ability that it ignores cover. So really, it's a much better upgrade. Although it's a little bit pricey, it's definitely worth taking because you're getting those um, four shots at double the range. The abilities, they've got Canticles of the Omnissiah, and then they've got Pistoliers. You can choose to fire pistol weapon models in this unit uh, are equipped with, even if the unit advances turn. There's no penalty for that either. You can still just, just fire them normally, um, which is even better. It means that they've got even more of an effective range. You can move 12 inches, um, then they can advance um, on, on a D6, and then uh, they can still fire the pistols. So they can still uh, reach out uh, to, to units that may well be just, just over that 12 inch range. Rad saturation, you subtract one from the toughness characteristic of enemy units without the vehicle keyword whilst they're within one inch of any units from your army with this ability. This is fantastic and this is normally what Vanguard have. Um, so it kind of negates their uh, low strength in a way because it's removing one of the toughness and typically uh, other armies are, are either toughness four or the toughness three and if they're toughness three then that that's going to get them down to toughness two which can make or break some combats and finally bionics models in this unit have six plus invulnerable save so that's nice that they'd get some kind of invulnerable save so four plus normal six plus invulnerable three wounds they're just a bit squidgy um the way i would take these out is definitely from from long range if you've got heavy bolters if you've got um heavy bolters are, are fantastic for this this because the you know these sulfur hounds only have a toughness of three and the heavy bolt is a strength five if you've got any kind of weaponry that has strength five strength six um even auto cannons would be great against these these things uh but uh, and likewise if you've got fast units that can get into close combat with them uh, to tie them up to stop them from firing off um uh, those weapons uh that would be great too you just got to be wary of their their sulfur breath uh, which has a potential of of 18 uh hits if the dice gods aren't on your favor at that point in time. The keywords Imperium, Adeptus Mechanicus, Skitari, Forge World, Cavalry, Cerberus, Silver Hounds. So a very nice, fast, effective unit with a, a load of uh, phosphor weapons and that rad saturation. Uh, but you need to be within one inch of, of enemy units uh, for that. Now, on the flip side, you've also got the Cerberus Raiders right here. Now, I think this data sheet did come with the, the models. They are cheaper. They've got a power points cost of a two, but their stat line remains the same. The unit makeup contains the same in that the maximum you can have there is seven in the whole uh, unit. The Alpha uh, is equipped with different weapons this time. It is equipped with an, Arca with an Archeo Revolver and Galvanic Carbine, along with a Cavalry Saber and uh, Clawed Limbs. And then every other Raider is equipped with a Galvanic Carbine, Cavalry Saber and Clawed, clawed Limbs. So that's interesting that um, the only thing that the Alpha gets on those uh, is the Archeo Revolver. They've all got these Cavalry Sabres. Um, and I actually think that the, uh, these uh, Sulfur Hounds should have uh, received some kind of close combat weapon as, as well, um, not just the Clawed Limbs. I mean, you know, these guys have, uh, you know, longer range weapons and they've also got a, a close combat weapon, um, but the Sulfur Hounds don't really get anything like that. Um, and it would have been nice if they did. So let's talk about the Archeo Revolver that the Alpha has. It's a range 12 inch pistol weapon, uh, strength five, AP minus two and damage two. That's quite decent actually. Um, you know, you, yes, it's only one shot, uh, but it's nice AP minus two, it's nice damage two, quite solid. Now the main weapons that uh, the rest of the Raiders have uh, are called these Galvanic Carbines. So it's an 18 inch range assault two weapon, brilliant. Uh, you know, effective range there of 30 inches, not to be uh, ignored. Uh, strength for AP zero though and damage one. Now it would have been nice if it was uh, AP minus one, but it is what it is. It's essentially a shorter range uh, bolt gun with, with two shots. Uh, when resolving an attack made with this weapon on an unmodified roll of a six, this weapon has an armor penetration characteristic of minus one for that attack. So there you go. You've got, you've got a uh, chance there. You get a, a wound of uh, sixes, then it becomes AP minus one. So that negates the AP zero um, 
uh, negativity. Uh, then the, the close combat weapons are these cavalry sabers. Uh, they're strength plus one, so that's strength four. So they're hitting at a higher strength than the um, sulfur hounds. AP minus one and damage one. That's quite straightforward. Clawed limbs work just the same as the sulfur hounds. Uh, they're strength plus one, which is four. AP zero, damage one. And uh, when the bearer fights, it makes two additional attacks with this weapon. So you're getting two strength four, uh, damage one uh, attacks there. War gear options, one Cerberus Raider can have an enhanced data tether, uh, and the enhanced data tether, if a model of this unit has an enhanced data tether, you can reroll morale test taken for this unit. That may well come in handy with a leadership of seven or, or six. They've got uh, Canticles of the Omnissiah, Bionics, models in this unit have a six plus invulnerable save, so again, um, although they've got toughness three, they do have three wounds, save a four plus, and the invulnerable six plus. They've got a, an ability here called Skirmishing Line. At the start of your first battle round, before the first turn begins, this unit can move as if it were your movement phase. This unit must end that move more than nine inches away from any enemy models. If both players have units that can do this, the player who is taking the first turn moves their units first. It's a little bit like the scout rule in that they can uh, move to start off with. And then they've got this amazing ability called the Eye of Cerberus. Range weapons models in this unit are equipped with can target, so it's a bit of a misprint there, um, can target a character unit, even if it is not the closest enemy unit. In addition, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model in this unit, a wound roll of six plus inflicts one mortal wound on a target in addition to any other damage. Now, this is where those galvanic carbines um, come into their own. They've got two shots each, uh, but you get your sixes on the wound uh, you're getting one mortal wound on top of that armor penetration of minus one. That's the way I'm reading it. I don't think it's specifically against the character because it would have had the word character afterwards uh, if it would, uh, you know, uh, give a, a mortal wound for that character. And that's it for the ability. So based on that, these are really good um, uh, unit. Uh, you know, if you had uh, six of them or so um, going after uh, a, a character, they can, and the character's on the battlefield somewhere, um, you know, these, these have an effective 30 inch range of getting to the character and on sixes, you're getting mortal wounds on the character. So these really are character hunters. The enhanced data tether can be useful if they do get, uh, if they do suffer some casualties. But I think there are more benefits with the Raiders uh, than the Sulphur Hounds. And um, yeah, the Sulphur Hounds do look cool. Uh, either you go for these kind of steeds or you go for the, the, the hound um, looking um, beasts. Uh, but I really do think that the Cerberus Raiders have more more benefits in terms of game game terms, in terms of they've got a specific purpose, go after the characters and take off those mortal wounds. The Sulphur Hounds, they, they will do a lot of damage and they can pump out some a fair amount of shots. But they're kind of one trick pony, I guess, is, is uh, lowering the toughness of uh, other uh, units. And um, units not being able to uh, receive the cover save. But I think the Raiders are uh, a bit more useful in that regard whereas the Sulphur Hounds go, go for the optimal number of hits and are good against hordes uh, and good at reducing the toughness of um, enemies. So they're the, both of the two uh, very new units, the Sulphur Hounds and Raiders, and they are uh, they, they look different. I love the kit, it's absolutely fantastic. They, they look very different too um, uh, once you've built them and uh, they play very differently as, as well. The Sulphur Hounds, you don't really mind getting them in combat, but you want to avoid the, the Raiders getting in combat um, by, by any means, definitely. They're just not equipped for that. Um, but if they do find themselves in combat, at least they all have the Cavalry Sabres. Okay, and now let's talk about the Taraxi Sterilizers. Um, you've got the Sterilizers and the Sky Stalkers in, in one box set. I think you've got the uh, Sky Stalkers uh, rules data sheet in with the box set and you didn't get the sterilizers so this is a, uh, a closer look at this data sheet uh, they are a power points cost of a four it's the same points cost as um the sky stalkers they've got exactly the same uh profile there as the sky stalkers the unit contains one taraxi sterilizer alpha and four uh, sterilizers it can additionally contain up to five sterilizers um, the alpha is equipped with flechette blaster taser goad i want to say taser toad uh, every taraxi sterilizer is equipped with phosphor torch and taraxi talons um, 
The stat line reads 12, movement of 12 inches, weapon skill and ballistic skill both 3 plus, strength 4, toughness 3, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 6 and a save of 4 plus. That's, that's an alright stat line. Um, you know, good speed, uh, good weapon skill and ballistic skill, strength is 4 which is nice to see from Mechanicus. Toughness, they are a bit squidgy but they do have 2 wounds each and they do have 2 attacks. Uh, their leadership is a bit poor and their save is, you know, 50-50. Uh, the alpha um, changes that a little bit by having 3 attacks and a better leadership. That's usually what happens with um, sergeants and things. Now the weapons that the Sterilizer Alpha is equipped with and the Skystalker Alpha are both exactly the same. Uh, which is a bit odd and a bit weird. I would have liked to have seen the Sterilizer Alpha have some kind of like mini flamer or mini version of the Phosphor Torch. Like a hand Phosphor Torch or a hand torch. I don't know. But it seems a bit odd that it's got the, the Fleshette Blaster which is what um, the Skystalkers have. Uh, seems a bit of a missed opportunity there but let's talk about it the fleshette blaster it's a 12 inch pistol 5 weapon strength 3 ap 0 and damage 1 that's not very good it's it's all right that it's got five shots but yeah it's not as uh, as amazing as I, I would have expected um then the main weapon that these sterilizers have uh, are these phosphor torches now these are a range of 12 inch assault d6 strength 4 ap minus 1 and a damage of 1 you don't make a hit with the weapon it automatically hits and the targets don't receive uh, cover that's quite decent it's odd that it's assault d6 i would have preferred it to be six in total but still you know if you've got four of these because you'll have four of these with uh, the phosphor torches that's a potential of 24 shots that could be quite horrific i mean on the other hand you could only get four shots <laughs> so uh, you're running a bit of a risk there um, but it's nice that it's ap1 and it's nice that it removes uh, the cover the melee weapons then so the alpha has this thing called the taser goad so plus is the strength by two so that's now strength six ap0 though and damage one uh, and any uh, unmodified hit rolls of six causes two additional hits. Uh, so you get three attacks with this, and you, and you, you could you could get sixes on those, um, and then you you suddenly got six attacks. So that's quite nice. Um, but yeah, AP zero though. And then this is the thing that they're all equipped with, which the uh, Sky Stalkers don't have, uh, which is quite odd because they're both Taraxi. But nonetheless, uh, these uh, sterilizers have the Taraxi Talons and I really wish that the Sterilizers would have had them and I really wish that the Skystalkers would have had them too. It's a strength of the user which is only 4 but not too bad. AP minus 1 though and a damage of 1 and the strength and the weapon has a strength characteristic of plus 1 if the bearer made a charge move or performed a heroic intervention. So it really encourages you to get really close with these and get them into combat. Um, you, you get a plus 1 strength so now it's strength 5 AP minus 1 and damage 1 which isn't too bad at all. Uh, the abilities, they've got Canticles of the Omnissiah, Bionics, so they get the 6 plus and vulnerable uh, and they've got the 4 plus normal. They've got these abilities, they've got another set of abilities called Soar Away. At the beginning of your movement phase the unit can boost into the skies you remove the unit from the battlefield, it can return to the battlefield as described in the Thermal Riders ability, which is there. Uh, this unit can not both soar away and descend in the same turn if the battle ends. While this unit is in the skies, the unit is considered to be destroyed. So at the beginning of the, uh, of the movement phase, you can remove them from battlefield. Uh, uh, and then um, you've got to wait a whole another turn and then they can just um, uh, deploy again. And this is what Thermal Riders say. It says during deployment you can set the unit instead of setting it on the battlefield. If you do, well the unit has boosted in the skies using Soar Away ability. At the end of your movement phases you can set it up uh, anywhere in the battlefield that's more than 9 inches away from any models. So what that means is at the beginning of the movement phase you can't take them off the board and then at the end of your movement phase put them back on the board within 9 inches. You have to do that. You have to do that at uh, in your next uh, movement phase, not within the same one, which is yeah how sort of teleporting kind of works too. Um, swooping strikes. If this unit makes a charge move, add one to attacks characteristics of models in this unit until the end of the turn. That's pretty good. Again, another reason to uh, get them to uh, charge in. Uh, so you get yet yeah, another attack. So that means you're going to have. Um, uh, your four attacks with your alpha and your three attacks each with your sterilizers. Uh, so that's 12 attacks, that's 16 attacks in total um, with the Taraxi Talons. So that's 16 strength five uh, attacks at AP minus one. Pretty good, pretty good uh, for, for a unit of five of them. Or you can use the alpha's uh, taser code. 
keywords Imperium Adeptus Mechanicus Skitari Forge World Infantry Jump Pack Fly and Sterilizers. Now, how does the Taraxi Skystalkers uh, weigh up compared to them? Um, other than them looking very similar uh, model wise, except for the, the, the face plates and they've got grenades and they've got the, the different main weapon uh, and they don't have the talons, which I find is odd that they're called Taraxi but they don't have Taraxi talons. They, they're going for a longer range, but um, a, a set number of uh, shots. Now the Alpha, now the stat line is exactly the same and the Alpha works exactly the same. Got the same Flechette Blaster and the same Taser Goad, but doesn't have access to those Taraxi Talons. You can have the same number, so you can have up to 10 uh, in, in the squad in total, but they're equipped with these uh, flechette carbines. Now instead of these uh, phosphor torches which have which are assault d6 so you run the risk of only getting four shots um, these flechette carbines have a set assault five so that means you're guaranteed 20 shots uh, with these guys and then you can add in the flechette blaster of the um, alpha and you're guaranteed 25 shots at a range of 12 inches. The carbines though are a 24 inch range. Again, this is a, another odd thing to have uh, it ha for, for the Alpha uh, to have what's, what's potentially a, a worse weapon. You, you're getting the taser goad, which pluses the strength to six, and you can get uh, additional hits as well. But at what cost? I, I would have preferred the Alpha to have just a fleshette carbine. Um, it's nice that it, that it has the taser goad, um, is a bit better in combat uh, and makes use of that extra attack. Uh, but still, I would have preferred all of them having these flechette carbines so then you can pump out uh, the 25 shots at uh, 24 inch range. However, this is where they go down. The, the strength is only three, so they're quite weak. They don't have an AP and the damage is only one and they don't actually have any uh, extra ability. They're lacking this uh, little extra special um, ability. And speaking of which, uh, you've got the Canticles of the Amasiah, you've got Bionics again, so 6 plus invulnerable. You've still got Soar Away and the Thermal Riders, which may or may not be as useful as the um, Sterilizers, because the Sterilizers, you want to get close to use those uh, Flamers, which are a bit of chance though in terms of how many shots you're going to get. Uh, but at least these can just fly in, you know, from a uh, 24 inch range away and just let rip with all, all of those shots, uh, even though they're not a high strength shot. So same rules there in terms of Soar Away and Thermal Riders, uh, but this is an extra thing that they've got called the Arc Grenade Cluster. Uh, these grenades right here, they look a bit funky. They look like sticky grenades. Um, at the start of the shooting phases, you can select one enemy unit that this unit moved across this turn and roll 1d6 for each model in this unit, adding two to each, each result if that unit is a vehicle. Uh, for each five plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. Now, this is pretty good, and this is one of the main reasons uh, you'll get them, their ability to inflict these uh, mortal wounds. Um, you've got to get them to move across enemy units. If you're quite a close range to a unit and you move 12 inches past them and um, that must have meant that you are within six inches of them already and possibly uh, going to be within six inches um, afterwards unless you started a, a few inches away from them and you zoomed all the way past them so there's a high chance that you're going to end your movement uh, phase uh, still within close combat range of the unit that you've moved across so this is where it's a little bit of an odd rule is it worth um, that risk uh, of getting these mortal wounds uh, of five pluses um, I don't think it works uh, as much as the fuselage um, for the archaeopter I see what they've done there they've kind of applied that rule to to these um, but you're running the risk of getting even closer with, with these non kind of assault units um, that are a bit squishy uh, just for the sake of, of some mortal wounds now it might be worth the trade-off but five pluses is still a, a bit of a gamble um, to go for with these uh, with these grenades Personally, I would have preferred uh, these grenades on the sterilizers and then give the Sky Stalkers something different, something more long range, like uh, a, a, an extra sniper rifle or, um, I don't know, a, a flechette grenade maybe, which had a, a range of um, six inches or something. But again, it was five hits or I don't know, just, just something, just, just something uh, extra other than uh, making them get quite close uh, to a unit. And then we get to the next two uh, new units. I say two, they're in one box set, 
uh, for £45. I've recently built two of them. Love the kit. I uh, wish I'd bought it earlier. Um, I guess I was put off by the initial look at it, uh, being like a copy of like a hover tank landing craft thing, but uh, it came out last year in July, and I'm so pleased that this uh, new release of Mechanica's stuff that prompted me to, to go back and um, pick up this model and uh, do it justice, which I, I hope you'll um, enjoy the review that's uh, on its way. So if we look here, you've got two uh, unit entries. You've got one for the uh, for, for a transport option uh, for the Dune Rider and one for the heavy support, which is the uh, Disintegrator. Now, the Dune Rider itself is a power points cost of a four and a points cost of 65. You're gonna have to buy the two uh, Cognis Heavy Stubbers, but they're only two points each, so that's four points. And then the twin Cognis Heavy Stubber, uh, which is another four points. So it's only eight points more, so it's only 73 points uh, for the whole um, uh, unit because the broad spectrum dated tether uh, is free. So it's start line reads. It's one of these uh, units whereby uh, the remaining wounds uh, affects its um, movement, its ballistic skill and number of attacks. So if it's, it starts off with 12 wounds, so if it's got between 7 and 12, its movement speed is 12 inches, ballistic skill is 3 plus and it's got 3 attacks. If it's between 4 and 6 wounds, the movement speed is 9 inches and ballistic skill is 4 plus and uh, attacks is uh, drops down to D3 and then when it's on its final 1 to 3 wounds uh, drops down to 6 inch movement speed, ballistic skill 5 plus and uh, only 1 attack. The rest of the stat line reads its weapon skill is 6 plus, its strength is 6, toughness 6, 12 wounds, leadership 8 and a save of 3 plus. Not too bad really when you think of it as a, as a transport. I mean if we're comparing it to like a Rhino which is uh, you know, one power points uh, cost less. It's the same movement speed, which I, I do find bizarre that it's the same movement speed as a tracked vehicle, as a, as a Rhino, you'd think it could glide across. It's got the same ballistic skill, believe it or not, as Space Marine driven uh, Rhino. The, the Rhino does beat it with the Toughness 7, but uh, the Dune Rider has more wounds, wounds 12. Uh, but it still has the same leadership, still has the same uh, save. The Dune Rider can transport 10 Secutari infantry, well, so can the Rhino, well, Space Marines, of course. Um, but the Dune Rider is equipped with arguably much better weaponry. It's got two Cognis Heavy Stubbers, so that's six shots at 36 inch range. And it's also got a twin Cognis Heavy Stubber, which is another six shots. So you've got 12 shots there pumping out, and you can fire all those uh, Cognis weapons while it advances, something that the Rhino could only dream of doing with its um, rapid fire 2 um, storm bolter. Uh, it can self repair though, but the Dune Rider beats it because it's, it can move and not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. And it's got the canticles of the Omnissiah and it's got the broad uh, spectrum data tether, which we'll go on to in a moment. However, you could compare it to the newest uh, Primaris only uh, transport, but that only has a capacity of six. So, so again, it kind of fails in its role as a main transport vehicle. Uh, the Impulsor has arguably better weapons with the Bellicatus missile array or the uh, Iron Hail Sky, Sky Talon array or the Iron Hail Heavy uh, Stubbers. It can have an invulnerable uh, save and it has a better strength and toughness. Um, but again, it still doesn't have as many wounds as this Dune Rider. So quite a survivable bit of kit giving it 12 wounds and it's got the same number of wounds as the uh, you know the heavy support the the disintegrator it's just the toughness isn't seven like that uh, tank so all in all uh, compared to the other transport options from other armies it's actually pretty decent um, you've got a, a, a large number of shots there you can transport 10 uh, infantry models yes its toughness isn't seven of course but it does have a fair number of wounds uh, and, a, and a decent save too and uh, it's got a nice movement speed. So the weapons then, the Cognis Heavy Stubber, it's a 36 inch range, heavy 3, strength 4, AP 0 and damage 1. However, you can shoot it even if the vehicle advances, uh, but you have to subtract 2 from the hit roll. And then the twin Cognis Heavy Stubber, same uh, range, 36 inches, heavy uh, 6 shots, apologies, uh, strength 4, AP 0 and damage 1. And again, it works, you know, you can fire it if you advance, but you have to subtract 2. It's got, the, vehicle, the unit's got canticles of the Omnissiah, broad spectrum data tether. Uh, what that means that is that at the start of the morale phase until the end of the phase, you add one to the leadership characteristic of uh, 412 models um, from your army if the unit is within three inches of 
any friendly models with a broad spectrum data tether. So that's really useful if you've got your uh, unit of uh, rangers or um, vanguard that do have a, a piddly um, leadership of six, then um, it's, it's gonna help them and, and get that leadership seven. It's a hover platform, so it doesn't suffer a penalty for moving far and heavy weapons. Very convenient, because it's armed with heavy weapons. And then it can explode. Uh, when the model is destroyed, you roll 1d6 before any embarked models disembark, and before removing it from play. On a 6, it explodes, and each unit suffers uh, 6 inches, suffers d3 mortal wounds. Uh, model can tra transport 10 Secretary Infantry. Uh, Forge World Infantry models, can, it cannot transport Belisarius Call. Uh, Cataphron Breacher or Cataphron uh, Destroyers. I don't think it can carry Castellan Robots because they're not uh, infantry, um, which is, yeah, a bit of a sad face. Uh, anyway, keywords, uh, Imperium, Adeptus Mechanicus, Skatari, Forge World Vehicle, Transport and Scorpius Dune Rider. Um, how would I... I'll, I'll go through more of the rules and how I'd use it and the strategies and tactics and, you know, all the rest of it in its review, which is coming very soon to the channel. But as a model and a unit, I just prefer this to the... Um, uh, transvector you know the transvector is you know faster but it can only transport six uh, models and yeah it's gonna cost you an extra 15 pounds um, and sort of money wise then we've got the Scorpius disintegrator now much like all of the other fast attack uh, choices that we've been flooded with with this uh, in this new release and um, we desperately did need uh, more heavy support choices uh, for an army that is you know machines robots servitors a molding of flesh and machine um, and weaponry you'd, you'd think that um, this army would have a lot of heavy support as it stands space marines have more but then again space marines have been around for many decades um, in the hobby and they've thus uh, added more and more units as the time has gone on but uh, originally, the six years ago, we just had the Castellan Robots and the Onega Dune, Dune Crawler. Uh, I always kind of thought that they should have had some kind of big gun platform thing like Mechanicum do in Forge World. You have the big Belisarius Volcano Cannon. I, I was thinking maybe something a bit smaller like a turbo laser or, you know, just a smaller Titan weapon on wheels or... That's what I'd like or on or on like or on or on caterpillar tracks or something like that. That would be cool. But instead we got these Castellan robots which look like a throwback from uh, the nineteen fifties um sci-fi. Which aren't too bad. Um it does reflect that they've been around for a long, long time. Uh, and the Onega uh, Dune Crawlers or Onaga Dune Crawlers, however you want to say that, which is kind of like a, a spider type um uh, vehicle, but it's only got four legs. Uh so you knock out one of the legs and it's gonna be pretty um pretty vulnerable um, but still that is the kind of weapons platform that we get but it's still only toughness seven and um, so it doesn't uh, reach the dizzying heights of any of the uh, heavy uh, space marine tanks with with toughness eight uh, for you know for the land raiders um, or even uh, stalkers uh, and and predators uh, you know um, if, an odd thing to note is that uh, the Hunter and Stalker both have Toughness 8, whereas the um, Whirlwinds and Predators only have Toughness 7, but I think they, they do have extra additional armoured plates. Anyway, so nice to see uh, uh, an extra heavy support choice. So whoop de doo we've now got three heavy support choices. Um, and I like what they did with the uh, Dune Rider. Um, with, you know, in one kit for £45, you could either make the, the transport option or the heavy support. There are ways of magnetising things so that you can have both. Um, you can check out some videos if, if, you, if you don't want to get um, two separate ones. Um, you can get one and use it for um uh use it as the disintegrator if you wish it's not that easy you can't just leave some pieces not glued and then just swap them like a like a different weapon it does require a bit of work um but there is that option anyway moving on then so it's a power points cost of a six and a points cost of 85. now it's equipped with three cognis heavy stubbers uh, a disruptor missile launcher, ferromite cannon. It can change the ferromite cannon for a, a Belarus energy cannon. The disruptor missile launcher is free. The Cognis heavy stubbers are two points each, so that's an extra six points. The ferromite cannon is 25 points, and the Belarus energy cannon is 20 points. So the Belarus uh, cannon equipped version is, is, is a little bit cheaper. It's one of these vehicles, again, whereby its remaining wounds affects uh, the rest of its um, stats. So it starts off with 12 wounds, and if it's got between 7 and 12, its movement speed is 12 inches, ballistic skill 3 plus, attacks 3. Uh, between 4 and 6 wounds, you've got 9-inch uh, movement, 
ballistic skill four plus and attacks d3 and then between one and three wounds you've got a movement of six inches ballistic skill five plus and attacks of one it's exactly the same stat line there as the disintegrator um, the main stat line though, the only difference is the Toughness 7. That extra front armour plate and the, and the canopy gives it an extra Toughness 7. I don't know whether I would have liked to have seen um, a couple of more wounds as well, like Wounds 14 and then Toughness 7, but I, I don't... Th I mean, I think with the, with the armoured um, roof of the vehicle and, and uh, closed top, I guess, uh, I don't think it's it's a toughness of a Land Raider um, or a Repulsor. I, I think it's pushing it just to be a toughness of a, of a Predator, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, the weapons then. So it comes with this Ferromite Cannon, which we'll talk about first. It's the go-to weapon, really. It's a 48-inch range, heavy 3, strength 8, AP minus 3, and a damage 3 weapon. Now, this is important because it says it's a hover platform, so the model does not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. So it's got an effective range there of 60 inches, which is whopping, and I think a lot of people may uh, overlook that. The other weapon you can choose is the other weapon you can choose uh, has the other weapon you can choose has um, potentially more shots. Um, uh, the energy cannon. It's a range 36, heavy 3d3, so you can get up to nine shots there. Strength six, AP minus one, and a damage of two. And it can also target units uh, not visible to the bearer. So if you're going against a small amount of high toughness units, get the fer ferromite cannon or armor or knight armies. And um, if you're going against hordes, uh, get the energy cannon, because um, it's still got that effective range of 48 inches uh, with potentially nine shots, uh, which could be devastating. Anyway, the Cognus Heavy Stubbers uh, are, as I mentioned in the Dune Rider, 36 inch range, heavy three, strength four, AP zero, and damage of uh, one, and it can uh, fire those uh, if it advances. And then you've got this new weapon, which you don't, re which we haven't really seen before, which is the Disruptor Missile Launcher. It's a 36 inch range, heavy D6, strength seven, AP minus two, and damage D3. Again, that's not to be overlooked. Effective range there of 48 inches. You could get six strength seven, AP minus two, with a damage of D3 shots. So that's that's another so that's another uh, top weapon in this with this unit. The abilities, Canticles of the Omnissiah, broad spectrum data tether, works exactly the same as the Dune Rider, hover platform and explodes, works the same too. Um, and the keywords, uh, the only difference is uh, it's got vehicle Scorpius Disintegrator. And then we move on to another one of the new units for this release, which is the Archaeopter. Now this comes in three flavors. Uh, I think I touched upon uh, the other flavors in its review, so, so please do check out my full review of the unit. Uh, I don't think that the model's worth it at all uh, after building it and after building the, the Scorpius as well now. It's 60 pounds for two sprues. That's a very, very hard pill to swallow when you compare it to like a knight which is 30 pounds more and the number of sprues and content you get in one of those and posability and all kinds of things this one unfortunately it, it's a it's a model unit i'm trying to look at it from both angles it's a it's a model it's difficult to swap between the different versions uh, without heavy magnetization you don't really get many moving parts in it it's a small model, the wings are big, but they don't have that much detail on. It's just not worth it. It's, it's just very overpriced. And I think we would have enjoyed something that was, again, the same price as the Scorpius, £45 or £50 for a flyer, not this inflated £60. I mean, £60, I think I bought the Xiphon uh, Interceptor for about £70, which, yes, it's made by Forgeworld, but it's, it's absolutely uh, beautiful, stunning kit. And... Um, yeah, anyway, enough about that. Let's go on to the, the rules of these because you only get one uh, set of rules for set of data sheets um, with the model, which is the Stratoraptor, which is the one I went for um, over the, the transport option and the uh, the bomber. So let's uh, talk about the, the Transvector, first of all. Um, they're all flyers, they all count as uh, you know a, a flyer. And I'll also say that their stat lines all are exactly the same. Just their points and their power points cost uh, differ. They could have just said on, on the Stratoraptor, you know, instead of writing the stat line, they could have just put um, C Transvector or something like that. Anyway, it's a vehicle and it's one of these units uh, whereby its remaining wounds affects its, the rest of its stat line. Now, I kind of want to compare it to a Storm Talon gunship. Um, I don't want to compare it to the Storm Raven because the Storm Raven is, is a way, way better uh, unit. But you could also kind of compare it to the Stormhawk Interceptor. Again, their stat line for those 
those models are is, is very similar actually to these but um, funnily enough uh, <laughs> the Space Marine ones have a worse leadership um, which strikes me as odd um, but they do have arguably better weapons they're better equipped um, it's just the only flying kind of transport that Space Marines have in their codex at least is that Storm Raven uh, gunship uh, which is a bit unfair to compare it to but it's got a similar number of wounds and a similar toughness to um, the, you know, the Space Marine equivalent. So it starts off with 10 wounds, which is about right for a flyer of this size. And uh, if it's got between 6 and 10, its movement speed is 20 to 50 inches, which is the same as a Storm Talon gunship. Uh, ballistic skills 3 plus and attacks 3. Between 3 and 5 wounds, it drops to 20 to 35 inches, ballistic seal 4 plus and attacks d3. And then uh, between 1 and 2 wounds, it drops to 20 to 25 inches and ballistic skill 5 plus and attacks 1. That start line and how that works is exactly the same with the other uh, two variants. The Transvector is uh, equipped with two Cognis Heavy Stubbers and twin Cognis Heavy Stubbers and it has a command uplink. So the Cognis Heavy Stubbers, <laughs> you probably had enough of hearing me talk about the Cognis Heavy Stubber um, stat line for this. So I won't go through the full stat line, but um, two of them would be six shots, and then a twin Cognis would be another six, so you've got 12 shots. You've got the same number of shots there as um, the Scorpius Dune Rider. The power points cost for the Transvector is five, for the Stratoraptor it's seven, and for the Fusilav it's six. Points cost, the Transvector is 92 points, the Stratoraptor is 70 points, and the Fusilav is 102 points. It's got this, the Transvector therefore has got the same weapons as the uh, Scorpius Dune Rider. Um, you can have a chaff launcher instead of a command uplink. Uh, it's got canticles on the, uh, of the Omnissiah. Now the command uplink, which is what it's uh, equipped with already, if a model has a command uplink, friendly Forge World units can use this model's leadership instead of using their own whilst they are within six inches of this model. And that's quite a cool thing to have because the leadership is a whopping nine. I mean, you've got to be like a Space Marine captain or something to have a uh, leadership of a nine, which is just absolutely crazy. And I don't know why it has such an amazing leadership, but there we go. Um, you can swap that out for a chaff launcher, whereby when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against this model with a chaff launcher, you reduce the damage characteristic of that weapon by one to a minimum of one for that attack. That's quite cool. Uh, it's a maneuverable craft. When this model moves in your movement phase, first pivot it on the spot up to 90 degrees. Uh, this does not contribute to how far the model moves. Then move the model straight forwards. It can pivot up to 90 degrees one more time at any point during this move. When this model advances, add 20 inches to its movement characteristic until the end of the movement phase instead of making an advance roll. That's brilliant, you can use that advance roll and then you can uh, let rip with the Cognis weapons as well. Brilliant. Airborne, you cannot charge with this unit and this unit can only be chosen as a target of a charge if the unit making the charge can fly. You can only fight with this unit if it is within one inch of any enemy units that can fly and this unit can only make close combat attacks against units that can fly. Enemy units that can only make close combat attacks against this unit if they can fly. There we go, I think you get the, the, the picture there. It can explode, you roll a d6 before uh, any embark models disembark and before removing it from play and on a six it explodes and each unit within six inches suffers d3 mortal wounds it has the hover jet rule so before the model moves in your movement phase you can declare it will hover its move characteristic becomes 20 inches until the end of the phase and it loses the airborne hard to hit and maneuverable craft abilities until the beginning of your next movement phase so quite a big um, big loss of abilities there for having it as a as a hover jet and speaking of the hard to hit rule uh, when resolving an attack um, made with a ranged weapon against this model, subtract one from the hit roll. Um, so that's that's worth it too. So you you know you've got the chaff launcher which is reducing by damage and you're also reducing the, the hit roll by one, uh, it being hard to hit. Transport. This model has a transport capacity of six Secutari, uh, Forge World, Electro Priests, Forge World, Tech Priests, Forge World, Secutari, Infantry models. It cannot transport Belisarius Core, so it can transport pretty much everything except for the robots. It's nice that you can put the Tech Priests. I, I've been thinking before in my review, when I reviewed it, like what would I put in here? I would put the Secutari Titan Guard Hoplites in or Peltas along with the Tech Priest. I'd probably put the um, Rust Stalkers in and I'd probably put the uh, Electro Priests, something like that i don't think i'd just put six rangers in or six vanguard i don't think i'd put the rangers in or the vanguard you can have a unit of five of each if you want but i think that would be a bit of a waste um for this i would personally i'm of the opinion that i would rather have it as a stratoraptor or a, or a dedicated bomber and um, then have this as a transport because i just don't think that 
Adeptus Mechanicus have those models that, because I don't think Mechanicus have five model squad that can pose a real threat um, to most armies out there. I, I just don't think they can, unless they're back with, backed up by a, a tech priest. I mean, even five hoplites is, is, is um, pushing it a bit. So I'd rather put 10 Mechanicus in a Dune Rider and, uh, and use them that way to capture an objective point or to hold on an objective point, something like that. Moving over to the Stratoraptor then, which is the unit that I would uh, pick out of these variants. And that's because it fulfills a specific battlefield role, and that is that of a, uh, you know, an attack fighter. The stat lines read exactly the same as the Transvector. However, um, and you are getting the two uh, Cognus Heavy Stubbers, uh, but you're also getting two Heavy Phosphor Blasters and a Twin Cognus Laz Cannon. Now, the Twin Cognus Laz Cannon, it, it, it's on a 360 degree uh, turret thing, and it is a flyer up above. I wouldn't have any issues with that kind of firing forwards, if that makes sense, because it's quite high up anyway, so it'll be firing downwards. Um, so that's great already, because straight away it's a Cognis Laz Cannon, so you can uh, shoot it even if it advances, and you just got to subtract uh, two from the hit roll. It's Ballistic Skill 3+, plus anyway, so you're going to be hitting with, uh, with, with fives and two shots, you, you might not hit. Um, but still, having an effective range there of well, potentially 98 inches, which is which is astronomical. Um, anyway, its main main weapon here uh, on the front on the nose is the heavy phosphor blaster. If that name sounds familiar, it's it's because those Castellan robots uh, have them on their on their hands, and this fighter jet has it on its nose. I would have expected some kind of brand new um, beastie uh, weapon, some kind of haywire launcher, some, I don't know, something, something um, on the nose rather than just what the Castellan robots have. But still, uh, it's a range 36 inch, uh, heavy three, strength six, AP minus two, damage one uh, weapon, and uh, the target does not receive the benefit of cover. Now, comparing it to, um, you know, like a Storm Talon gunship, uh, which is like a dedicated uh, flyer, instead of those heavy bolters, it can have what's called a Skyhammer missile launcher. Um, and that is a 60 inch range, heavy three, uh, strength seven, AP minus one, damage uh, D3. And you can add one to the hit roll if the target can fly. Um, so that is a very, very nice missile launcher. It just misses it with the AP. It's only got AP minus one, but it makes up with that with the damage D3. Now the heavy phosphor blaster, it has one less strength, um, is way shorter range, but it does have the AP minus two. Um, but I would still pick the uh, Skyhammer missile launcher every time because probability wise, it can have a damage of two or more. So the one thing that the uh, gunship doesn't have is, uh, you know, las cannons and uh, a main weapon, and they're not the Cognus ones either. Maybe comparing it to the Stormhawk Interceptor is, is better, um, but the Interceptor is uh, more costly. The Icarus Storm Cannon is pretty decent, and you can have that Skyhammer uh, missile launcher. You can change that Storm Cannon um, to the Last Talon if you want, but um, that's that's a shorter range. So I just feel like the Stratoraptor has got two decent-ish weapons there, whereas uh, the other variants, which are a bit more pricey, have one really good uh, long-range weapon and an, a mediocre secondary weapon. Um, you know, so it's got that going for it at least. There's no point in going through any of the other abilities because they're all exactly the same as. Uh, the Transvector. Let's move on then to the final, final uh, option, which is the Fusilav. Now this is the bomber. Again, it's got the same stat line as the other two options. Uh, this time it's got four Cognus Heavy Stubbers. Oh my lord. Where does it fit them all? Well, I think it's got two at the front and um, two popping out the sides. So the main difference with the Fusilav is an extra ability called the bomb rack. At the end of your movement phase, this model can drop heavy bombs on one enemy unit it moved over in that phase. One, one unit, not multiples or anything like that, just one unit. To a maximum of 10 D6, roll three D6 for each vehicle, monster, model in that unit, and one D6 for each other model in that unit. 
For each roll of a four plus, that unit suffers one mortal wound. So let me paint a picture for you. It uh, flies the 20 inches, 30 inches over a squad of space marines. Okay, so you're getting 10 D6 there. 50-50 chances that, the, that they're gonna be uh, suffering mortal wounds. That's quite horrific. Um, you put it over, you fly it over a land raider, you got three d6s there and you know you got a chance of knocking off three mortal wounds a pretty good bomb i would have liked to have seen it drop more than one bomb but i kind of understand because if it's flying over and it it drops all of its payload on on that one unit that makes sense um it doesn't say that that's it for the whole uh, game which is great sometimes bombers they have this rule where they unleash the they uh, release their bombs from the bomb rack, and and that's it. You only get a, a you only get a finite number of uh, bombs themselves. So it can keep doing that. It can whiz across the battlefield at the 20, 30, 40, 50 inches or so, dropping these um, bombs uh, over a unit every turn. And if your enemy doesn't have anything against flyers, that's going to be a, a pain. It's going to be a thorn in your enemy's side. A toughness seven. You know, it's only got ten wounds, but you know, still toughness seven. Uh, it's going to be hard to hit and it's a maneuverable craft um you know you're subtracting one to hit it anyway uh you give it the chaff launch and it's reducing the damage down by one as well it's yeah because there's no real reason why you need the command up link um uh for that one uh much better to have the chaff launcher and have it as a bomber i'm quite tempted myself if the model wasn't sort of 60 pounds i don't need to hark on about the price but i i do think it's uh, quite atrocious i don't want to end on a, a negative point that is the end of my in-depth look at all of these new uh models and units you get some lovely pictures of them there my favourite are clearly the Cerberus Raiders and the uh, Sulphur Hounds. I love it when um, Games Workshop flood uh, the Mechanicus range uh, with this kind of zoomorphism um, into their models. Uh, I love the creativity. Um, the Archaeopter, I did like it initially, uh, but I think the price now has put a lot of people off especially with the inflexibility of the kit and I would rather have them focus more on you being able to uh, kind of uncon kind of easily swap them between the three variants that would have made the 60 pound a bit more easier to swallow but as it stands you know if you if you want to get all three variants that's almost 200 pounds worth on um you know four sprues on uh, on three flyers and uh, i think your money would be better spent elsewhere in a mechanicus army well you could pretty much buy a, a decent mechanicus army for that price couldn't you anyway that is the end of this uh, adeptus mechanicus um data sheet in-depth review i hope you've enjoyed it uh, there will be more adeptus mechanicus reviews coming on the channel over the next uh, couple of weeks as well as all the new releases you know we've got to be happy for all these new releases coming in and then we've got um necrons and more uh, primaris and uh indomitus and ninth edition it's a really really excellent time to be in the hobby and it's just what us hobbyists need after spending you know 10 12 weeks indoors saving lives uh, from this virus and stuff anyway i hope you've enjoyed it please do put it in the comments below which is your favorite new adeptus mechanicus uh, model in this new flood of releases and what model would you like to see mechanicus invent or create for the next uh, wave of, of new releases for them what would you like to see included in the army uh, other than bringing all the mechanicum models from forge world over into uh, 40k2 and having all those rules because i'd really like that and and that would tip me well over the edge of buying up all the uh, forge world mechanic and models put it in the comments below It'd be great to hear from you thank you ever so much for joining me today thank you for watching the omnisire protects